What's up, guys? Chris Jardine here, community and content developer with Out of the Park Baseball, back with another episode of our Perfect Team 21 tutorial series. We've covered a lot of team-based things in the first six episodes of the tutorial series, creating your team, the entry pool, the league structure, promotion, relegation, the auction house, collection missions. Let's get down to the nitty-gritty of managing your team. So we're all logged into our main account, the Schooners, here. So under the team tab, we have all these different options. And a lot of these are similar to what you're going to see in the core OOTP game. If you've played that, a lot of these screens are going to look familiar. So the first one, we have the team home screen. Um, this is now a customizable team home screen. You can change the size and how all of these look with the drop down arrows. You can change them to different things. Same as you can in the core game. You can change all these. We have the standings, your team leaders. Um, your primary roster, you have how you're doing in your division, where people have been going on the grab, what your schedule looks like, the rankings, uh, who's hot, who's not. Again, you could change these all around this year, which is really great. Change the size of a particular column or a particular box, and then you can use the drop down arrows to change the information that's there. Under rosters, this is where you can manage your roster in one of two different ways. So first of all, on the active and reserve roster, this is where you can swap cards back and forth from your active roster, which is limited to 26 players. This is the roster that you use um, sim to sim to play your games. And the reserve roster, which maxes out at 174 cards. So basically, the most active and reserve cards you can have at a time is 200. Now, keep in mind that taking a card from your active roster to the reserve roster, it will be 14 in-game days before you can put that player back into your lineup. So let's say um, Marcus Stroman not getting it done in my bullpen. I want to replace him with uh, Zach Wheeler as an example. If I put Wheeler in and take Stroman out, Stroman will have a little number next to him. You know what? Let's do it just for the sake of doing it because we're doing it live. So you can see, do you really want to move Marcus Stroman to the reserve roster? He will have to remain there for at least 14 simulated days. We're going to cancel. If I did move it, a little brackets will show up next to his name and say 14. That gives you an idea as the days go by how many more days before you can activate him. Also, under the player list, this lets you see all of the stats and things. So this is your batting stats for your all batters. Um, you can look at all players in your organization, which is up for 114 for me. And if we go back here, you can also manage your inactive cards. So your inactive cards can be, uh, you know, any number. Um, but it is important to note that inactive cards, you can't see them. The reason why we have active reserve and inactive is we don't want to transmit your entire card catalog to the server and back every single sim. So we make you narrow it down to 200 reserve cards and then everything else sits on inactive, which is locally in your game. It doesn't get transmitted back and forth to the servers unless you move them to the active or reserve rosters and hit submit team. And that's an important thing to note. And I will reference that several times during this video. Submitting your team up here is extremely, extremely important. There is a setting under PT settings. So if you go to main perfect team settings, automatically submit your team right here. It will automatically submit your team with 60 seconds to go in the clock, which is up here partially blocked by my big melon. Um, but again, you're always going to want to submit your team after you make changes. That will transmit your changes to the server, uh, and that way it will ensure that any changes you make keep. So managing your inactive cards, you have some filters here. Um, you can sell tagged cards, so you can tag a bunch of cards. You can quick sell them. You can activate tag cards deactivate tag cards. So that's kind of how you manage your active reserve and inactive rosters. Now, once you get in your team, the pitching staff screen is exactly the same as it is in the core game. You have your rotation over here, your bullpen over here. You can manage uh, pitch counts. You can set up whether you want a uh, four to six man rotation, who you want your next starter to be. Do you want strict um, on occasion, highest rested, strict order, or always start the highest rested? The AI will make some incremental changes based on what you pick. Allow starting pitchers in relief, yes or no. Um, then you got your bullpen, all your different roles, what you want your primary roles to be, uh, what you want their usages to be. I'm not going to bore you by breaking down each and every single one of these. I definitely suggest um, you check out if you want to go to OOTP settings. And I'm trying to remember where the button is to get the manual. It might not be right there, but I will link it in the... Um, description down below. 
And it explains all these different roles and how they interact um, with one another. You can also see your stats and stuff here with a bunch of cool filters and stuff. So if you want to see versus left versus right uh, in July, how people did against righties, you can break it down that deep if you'd like to. Then you have your lineups. Again, same as the core game. We have versus lefty DH and versus righty DH. All of the regular perfect team games have designated hitter. Um, the only place you'll see in perfect team no DH is in tournaments that specifically have no DH. Uh, you set your lineups down here. You can set your depth chart. Um, when the backups will start, uh, if it's going to be tired every so many games. Keep in mind, if your player is tired and you only have the backup set to go every 20th game, the AI may overwrite a particular player. Uh, player in a particular game you can use defensive substitutions you can have pinch hitters pinch runners you can specify all of that stuff on these screens then you have your global strategy your global strategy is basically what your overall team is going to do you can break it down for the whole game the first six innings seventh and eighth and ninth or later and you can look at all the different situations so all scores uh close which is plus or minus three very close plus or minus one or tied so you can change these all all eight of these different scenarios um you could change them around to whatever you're liking again there's a bunch of presets as well traditional balanced small ball moderate small ball moderate saver metric saver metrics and you can save these into a file as well so if you have some strategies that you use in one of your uh offline saves you can export that import it here as well i use the moderate uh tactician uh, I believe is what I use. No, moderate sabermetric is what I use. Um, and again, you have some different things down here. You can have a global pitch count for your starters, whether you want to use openers or not. If you're facing an opener, this is a big one. Openers, all the rage in baseball the last couple of years. Do you want to base your lineup based on the likely opener or the likely follower? That's an important uh, distinguishing thing to make. When do you want to use defensive substitutions and what the scenario is behind it? Then you have individual player strategy. So basically, in this case, we can take someone like Randy Reddy, bring him down, and we can have adjusted team strategy settings, which he'll use the regular team strategy settings, or we can override him with specific strategies of his own. So a great example is you have a Billy Hamilton or a Terrence Score, a guy that's a big uh, burner on the base paths. You want to crank his stealing and base running all the way up to the top. You can do that individually for each one of your players uh, you have some depth chart settings in here as well you have the pinch hit settings down here as well uh, again the ability to manage right down to the individual player on your team um, we have the scores and schedules this is pretty straightforward just a calendar view if you want to see you know you're playing one of your friends later in the month you kind of pick it out uh, you can kind of see anything in this month will be simulated today so you kind of have an idea okay it's going to be later tonight we're going to be playing our close personal friend down here the Charlotte Cha LK hard to say who it's going to be the Chauvin Lumber Kings. See, you get lucky. Um, and then we also have reports and logs, which again, will allow you to see some different things here. You can open these in your browser. You can select a bunch of different reports. There's all kinds of different headers up here as well. And then we have the customize your team design, which we went over a couple of times in some previous videos. If you want to see more about the customized team design, you can go back to the tutorial about uh, the very first tutorial about starting your team. But yeah, so once you get in and get your roster built, there's a lot of different things you can do with your team. Again, uh, especially if you're in the entry pool, make sure you're experimenting with different stuff. What kind of team do you want to build? Do you want to build a power team? Do you want to build a defense team? Do you want to build a contact team? Do you want to build a dual threat team, a contact defense based? Do you want uh, big right hand velocity based relievers? Again, make sure you're using the strategies, <coughs> excuse me, that support the rosters that you are trying to build. Guys, if you guys have any questions about player strategy, roster management, make sure you leave them down below. Guys, make sure you leave a thumbs up and subscribe and hit the bell so you get the notifications for all of our future videos. I am Chris Jardine, a.k.a. Snaggle J, community and content developer for Out of the Park Baseball. And until next time, keep swinging for the fences.